Okay, what's the biggest white elephant modern triumph have ever made? I mean, to date. Uh, the John Bloor triumph starting off at Hinckley in the early 90s. Well, you might have a different idea, but my vote goes to this stupid thing. Uh, the mid-90s Triumph Daytona 1200. It was a water-cooled inline four with 147 PS metric horsepower. Um, what was it supposed to be? <laughs> what what is this bike's purpose? Uh, I'm struggling to think all these years. Was it a tourer? Uh, no, <laughs> it scrunches you up like a jockey uh, with its low forward reach and long reach bars, uh, high foot pegs. Uh, you might have noticed on this one, I've actually changed it and lifted the bars back up to a usable height. Uh, one my back and hips and knees uh, we'll live with. Um, a lot of owners as well took the trophy pegs and brake levers and stuff like that and fitted those to, to lower them to make the uh, seat position less extreme. Uh, I owned this bike, this very bike I'm riding here now in my 30s and I remember going to Le Mans on it, desperate for some motorway or fast road so I could hit 80, 85 miles an hour on it to get some wind blast on my chest to relieve my wrists. Um, so it's definitely not a tourer. Um, now I've been a little, I've been a little bit unfair there really. Um, Triumph had a tourer, the trophy in the day. So uh, I'd admit they weren't trying to sell it as a tourer. Okay, what else could it have been then? Uh, well, it wasn't a scratching roadster either. Uh, they had a street triple for that. Uh, essentially the same bike. Uh, without a fairing uh, in a 900cc triple guys um, so you know lighter all round and that sort of stuff so it wasn't a scratcher uh, what about an all round bike for general use uh, no not really not with its extreme riding position uh, that's what the Triumph Trident and the Triumph Sprint was for um, so they were kind of all round bikes uh, regular bikes um, that, that were a lot more versatile than the Daytona. Uh, so what else have we got left? Commuter. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe for the Marquis de Sade. Uh, no, uh, commuting is not what Triumph had in mind for this bike. But but I still don't know what they did have in mind for this bike. Um, well, look, if it walks like a duck and all that sort of stuff, uh, it looks like a sports bike. Uh, that must have been it, yep. Yeah. Super racy sportster. Mm, no, <laughs> this was no more a sportster than a Harley Davidson sportster was a sportster. A bike I also once owned. Uh, you, you'd be laughed off a track day. Uh, and before, before I say that, uh, I, I bet I bet there's somebody who's do track do do track days with drive day donors and stuff. But look, we all know you can do a track day on anything. Can do a, a track down a hundred grom if you want to, but we all know it ain't right. And a Daytona twelve hundred on a track day isn't right either. So uh, it's not a track day bike, that's for sure. Um, so what? Yeah, I'm still struggling to think. What? What is this bike? Um, no. Well, look. In its day, it was Triumph's premium premium offering. It was their flagship, their dearest model. Um, that they did at the time uh, it's got to be a sports bike just look at it i mean it could take on the honda cbi 900 rr fireblade yamaha yzfr1 kawasaki zx 7r or 9r uh, yeah it did, it did, uh, no no it couldn't okay well it blitzed those pesky newfangled mid 90s new gen 600s i mean i don't mean the old 600s i'm talking about the likes of the new kawasaki zx 6r ninja and the soon-to-be Suzuki GSXR S Rad, yeah, wipe the floor with them. Wipe the floor with them. Uh, no, 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 no. Again, no, they didn't. <laughs> it didn't have a hope. Well, what else did it have then? Um, well, it had class leading. Um, it had class leading. Class leading. What? What? What did it have? A class leading. Weight. Yeah, class leading weight. Well, 
no actually uh, it was about 250 kilo wet uh, so that wasn't it okay okay brakes yeah it was probably the best on the market those brakes uh, no they were pretty weedy too uh, up front and uh, uh, the back wasn't too bad but up front wasn't wasn't great uh, not on the standard 1200 anyway okay suspension components top of the range they were top of the range uh, yeah top of the range if you want to body build with the rear shock uh, Jesus it weighs a ton uh, now the front KYBs weren't too bad adjustable for preload compression and rebound uh, not too bad at all actually I'll give them a pass um, what else did it have then uh, oh it was it had a cutting edge aluminium space frame that what no, uh, no sorry uh, it had a steel frame not any old steel though this was high tensile steel just like the entry level 750 trident oh yeah <laughs> uh, unique tank uh, nope bodywork's unique though nope no, def def definitely not. Uh, seat cow. Had a seat cow. All right, I'll give, all right, I'll give you that. Um, so what was it? Uh, it was 1,200cc water-cooled inline four, shoved into the company's frame and tuned for 147 PS metric horsepower. Always oh, sounds better. Uh, so it was a big, top-heavy for its day and class, bruiser bike with a fairing. Totally impractical for almost any role it did nothing brilliantly it was rubbish at pretty much everything you tossed it for but you know the seat wasn't bad <laughs> and still is today actually uh, but you know look I've got to say this bike still stirs an emotion in, in me and I can't describe it um, it has beautiful lines uh, the gruff air induction the old school headlights with good tires and properly set up suspension it doesn't handle too bad and it's not a tiring bike to ride uh, once you've lifted the bars and possibly lowered the pegs. It's worth uh, nothing, maybe a couple of grand to the right buyer, but that's not the point. My Tiger would go before this devil went. I'd never get rid of this bike. I bloody love it for being such a useless pile of junk. So, do you agree with me? I mean, you have to agree with me. There can't be a more stupider bike in the entire Triumph range since the 90s. Look, this bike is as useful to motorcycling as Tiny Planet Mode on a 360 camera is to quality video entertainment. Need I say more? Mm -hmm.